The Trip is the fourth episode of the first season of The Middle and this is directed by Leisha Lachmel and as always there will be spoilers as I talk about what happens in this episode and I started writing down what was happening scene by scene but then I realised I was basically just writing down what was happening and I didn't really have that many thoughts scene by scene so I'm going to just discuss these by part of the episode so i'll discuss the part focusing on brick and then i'll discuss the part focusing on sue but i will say even though i don't have that many specific scene by scene thoughts i did really enjoy this i definitely had a lot of fun with this one i don't know if what happened with sue was obvious or if i could remember it from the first time i watched this show i used to binge watch the show maybe 10 years ago give or take and there are some episodes that i remember well some that i don't remember so well and i don't know if this one was obvious i'd love to know if you watch this for the first time was it obvious the story with sue but i'll get to that in a moment first of all we have brick and as i said there will be spoilers from now in honesty the story with brick I didn't enjoy the journey. I didn't really care about the journey, but I did like the destination. Brick has a girlfriend called Olivia, but this is kind of against his will. This girl just walks up to Brick when he's at school and says, you're my boyfriend now. And I can imagine children doing this, but because Brick is very much an individual and doesn't really want to spend much time with Olivia, he's having a difficult time with it. And they end up getting married and having babies and... There's a, a great bit of dialogue between Brick, Axel and Mike. In fact, it's beautifully shot as well, where the three of them are all sitting at the table in a, in a, in a line and Brick's talking about Strawberry Shortcake and Rainbow Bright and it's very entertaining. That part of it I liked, but Olivia as a character is not very likable. She's not meant to be a likable character. But I didn't really care too much about the journey with this one, but I did love how this story concluded. Brick was supposed to bring Olivia's favourite lunch and he does this because, quite frankly, he doesn't know how else to handle the situation. But then he sees an opportunity and he puts Olivia's favourite lunch in a little bag on somebody else's lunch tray. And Olivia sees the lunch and declares that this new boy is her boyfriend. So Brick is kind of able to pass her off onto somebody else. And I like that. I couldn't remember that. I didn't remember how that part of the story concluded. And I don't think I'd predicted that. So that was quite nice. So the journey itself wasn't that great, but I did enjoy seeing Brick kind of conclude the story on his own. That was really sweet. We then have the story with Sue. And I really enjoyed this. But as I said, I feel like it was predictable. Partly because... Well, I'll tell you the moment when I kind of figured out what was going on. But again, maybe it was in the back of my mind. Maybe because I'd seen it before, it was in there somewhere. I'd love to know if you're watching it for the first time, was it obvious? Sue is selling cheese and sausage, and if she sells enough, she's able to go on this trip to Indianapolis. And she does. She sells over $3,000 worth of cheese and sausage. She's really excited. And then they put up the list of winners, and she wasn't the winner. And when she told Frankie that she wasn't on the list, the penny kind of dropped for me with what had happened because just before that, we'd seen Frankie handling this red envelope with, I think it was the check inside of it. And because we'd seen that and because it's a bright red envelope, it was clearly something that we had to pay attention to. And yes, I realise I've just pronounced envelope and envelope two different ways within the last minute. I don't know why I do that. I apologise if I'm inconsistent. I'm inconsistent with that in real life. And I think because it was this bright red colour, we were meant to pay attention to it. And then when Sue said my name wasn't on the list, I kind of thought something has happened to that check. And throughout the episode... Frankie is telling Sue to stand up for herself, to sort it out. It doesn't work out. It's the day of the trip. Frankie goes after the school bus, slightly creepy, and demands that Sue gets on the bus. And she does get on the bus. And I think it is beautifully filmed. It's so perfectly executed when Frankie goes into the car and she pulls down the, the visor for the window and the red check comes tumbling out, or the red envelope. And then we see Sue at the back of the bus, and Sue witnessed it, and she realised in that moment that it was all her mother's fault. She forgot to mail the check. And that's very awkward, but it's beautifully done. 
And we get something really positive out of this. And I like that we ended with a positive spin on things because Sue comes back from this trip and <laughs> she's been sending postcards. I will say that's some pretty quick mail delivery. If she's been sending those postcards and they've been getting there what seems like next day, I'm very impressed. And then she arrives home and she she goes off on Frankie. She really starts shouting at her mother and saying that she demands that she makes it up to her. And as Frankie points out, Sue had found her voice. And I really love that because up until that point, Sue had Sue has always tried to make the best of a bad situation. Even after this episode that happens, it's not like a uh, switch has just been flipped and she's a different person. But we get to see a side of Sue where actually she has a limit. And there is only so much disappointment that she can handle. And the fact that her mother forgot to mail this check, it meant that Sue couldn't get into any of the museums. She had to sleep on the hotel floor. It was a humiliating, awful experience for her. And that was too much for her. And she finally was able to find that voice and stand up for herself when something had not gone her way because of somebody else. And I think that that's really powerful. So definitely a good episode. The story with Brick is fine. I don't mind it, but I certainly don't love it. But the story with Sue, I thought, was pretty great. And as I said, I think it was kind of predictable. But again, maybe I could remember it from Once Upon a Time. But either way, predictable or otherwise, I think that this is a pretty good episode. Needless to say, the trip is one that I really thoroughly enjoyed. <laughs> 